Good morning, all. Let the call to order the Public Improvement Commission hearing of January 28th, 2021. Our first item on the hearing minutes, the request of the PIC uh, staff, the acceptance of the minutes of the PIC hearing held on January 14th, 2021. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of January 14th. So much. Second. Okay. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Moving on to the public hearing portion, our first item is on a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Boston Water and Sewer Commission. So the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Dorchester, consisting of the curb uh, realignment, roadway and sidewalk reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps, specialty pavement, utility infrastructure, bioretention infrastructure, landscaping, and a raised crosswalk. The locations are Washington Street, at Talbot Avenue, and Common Square, Norfolk Street, at Edgar Street, and Whitfield Street, Talbot Avenue, and Washington Street, and Common Square, Epic Street, and Washington Street, and Norfolk Street, and Whitfield Street, and Norfolk Street. This was a new business on January 14, 2021, and this has shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division. Specific prepares plan Epic Street, Norfolk Street, and Washington Street, Dorchester, 14 Chiefs, the two with a baby. Everybody see my screen now? Yes. Okay. Yes. The overview map of the project location, Codman Square, uh, we can up and out at the north is Washington Street, and the, the Codman Academy is, is right here. Um, on this plan, we can see there's um, several bump outs that Jeff alluded to to shorten crosswalks and improve pedestrian access. One here at this corner, this will have a bioretention area, which I'll point out in a minute. There's another one here that's a mid-block crossing, and, and each side will have, again, a bioretention area with a bump out. This corner here, again, is another bioretention area with a bump out. And then we have some more over here at the intersection of Whitfield and Norfolk Street. Uh, this one has a bump out with a bioretention. This is simply a raised crossing with a bump out. No, no bioretention there either. So these five locations each have separate details associated with them. I'll just give you a quick look at one of them as a sample. Um, this location here is at Tower in Washington. Um, I think this was shown to the commission before during the business. Uh, this area has a double pedestrian ramp to serve both sides of Talbot. Um, the areas to the left and right of the pedestrian ramp are the bioretention areas, and this is the areas that allow stormwater flow to flow in through curb inlets um, on various locations, and the water enters into a bioretention area, filtrates through the bioretention soil, through sand layers, into a storage area of crushed stone, and then if needed, into an overflow pipe uh, into the uh, drainage system. And again, these areas are going to be planted with several different varieties of plants. There's going to be educational signage um, at, at two or three of these locations, and all of these locations will be maintained uh, by the Cognitive Academy. I think that's it, Jeff, unless there's any other questions. Chief, 
Shane, this is PJ. I want to take this opportunity to recognize some exceptional leadership work that is being done by a series of uh, team members, not only from your department, led by Zach Bosworth, Jeffrey Alexis, our partners with the Environment Department, the Boston Water and Soil Commission, the Transportation Department. This is the absolute proper manifestation of all going in the same direction and doing remarkable work where it makes our Mission Zero projects go faster, the climate resiliency, you know, it takes all the city in the state and uh, I think we need to recognize exceptional work when it is being done from our partners from more than sewer, transportation, public works, our environment agents. So this is one of those feel good projects. And, and I also add that I think this initiative um, was, was definitely spearheaded and taken on by the Gotham Academy. Um, they're prepared to have this done. They're, they're, they're um, <laughs> waiting for this for a long time and they're expecting to include this in their curriculum as well um, for the students. So again, it's definitely a critical project. Um, and I can't wait to see that. Um, yeah. uh, thank you, Jennifer, for, for recognizing uh, us to Academy's leadership in this and part of your point of uh, what a great uh, project this is advancing so many of our, our shared goals. Um, and thank you as well for making that sort of minor detail adjustment on the, the space between the two pen ramps uh, at the corner of uh, Washington and, uh, and Talbot picking up and, and do business. Uh, other questions or comments um, from members of the commission on this project? Um, oh, okay. See if there's uh, members of the public who are looking to look testify in a moment. If you are interested in testifying, um, please feel free to either uh, use the raise hand feature um, or put your name in the chat and, and we'll call on you from there. Um, Todd or Avi, any uh, questions or comments from here? No, we're all set on this. We've received uh, the license maintenance and indemnification agreements from, uh, with signatures from both Water and Sewer and Cotton Academy. So we appreciate the prompt attention to that. Great. Uh, perfect, thanks so much. Um, it looks like our new is on. Uh, Ed, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, I'd love to hear your comments. Hi, I'm, I'm incredibly excited by this project uh, for a number of reasons. Um, just the technical stream itself has been um, the traffic going through as we slow down and some of the improvements with, with just the curb cutage. Uh, but I think what's really great is the, the rain garden is just a great to both um, with the runoff and as soon as we have to actually see uh, an example of what that is, to see the types of native plants that have been planted there. Uh, by maintaining it, it just makes the, the, the theoretical concepts that might be coming up for class um, absolutely practical uh, and sort of like introducing ideas of engineering, gardening, um, and urban planning. And so I'm just really excited. Um, I just what? Want to, oh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I just appreciate um, all the, work, the amazing work that's gone into this. Um, and I uh, can't wait to introduce it to my class. Uh, that's, that's fantastic. If, um, down the line, there is feedback you have for us about design features as we think about doing this in other locations that would help extend some of the academic benefit of this. Uh, that would that'd be, that'd be great to uh, learn as well to see how we can sort of incorporate visible changes into our streets into uh, things that support the curriculum in the classroom. Really appreciate it. Any other members of the public? Unmute me. Uh, Meg, go ahead. Um, yes, I want to continue the thank yous and starting with the students and the teachers. I mean, this was, I think, at least five years, maybe six years ago, this all started. And, um, and, and Kate England at Water and Sewer and Charlotte Fleetwood, without them, we would not have this project. And this project really got stumbled along the years because of staff turnover. And, um, but I think the students and the teachers, Ed, Ed has been phenomenal um, as our science department chair, just, you know, not letting up on this. And the kids, like, you know, where are the rain gardens? <laughs> where are the rain gardens? So I want to thank everybody, but my final thank you is to Jeffrey, who has endured my stalking, harassing, not giving up on the project, and, and been very gracious through it all, because I know I've been a kind of a nudge but, but I'm really happy, and I cannot wait for the ribbon cutting. So thank you. Uh, thanks for your comments, uh, and thank you for your leadership uh, on this and, and moving the project forward. Thank you for recognizing both Kate and Charlotte for, uh, for their good work, and uh, obviously, uh, Jeffrey for his terrific leadership for fun. 
Um, other members of the public who are addressing this plan? I don't see other hands raised, but Tyler, I'll get back to this. No, I don't see any others either, Chief. Very good. Then I'll entertain a motion on I'll make a motion to approve a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Boston Water and Sewer Commission for the making of specific repairs in Washington Street, Norfolk Street, Talbot Ave, Epping Street, and Whitfield Street as read into the record by the Chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Congratulations, all. Thanks so much. Moving on to our next item on a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Friends of Boyden Square for the making of specific repairs within Commonwealth Avenue, a public way of right within Center Median Island, generally at uh, St. Thomas Moore Road and Lake Street, consisting of curb realignment as well as new and relocated specialty pavers, street lighting and structure, traffic signal structure, storm grid infrastructure, fencing, landscaping, and a neighborhood sign. Uh, we've been doing business on uh, January 14, 2021, and this has shown out a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, specific repairs plan, Boyd and Square Island improvements, Commonwealth Avenue, Brighton, by Chief State of January 5th, 2021. Uh, thank you, Chief. Uh, this is Steve Farr again from Niche Engineering. Uh, I'm joined today, I think, by Ray Dunnis, who's the landscape architect uh, and really the point person uh, for the project. Uh, I will present and over some of the highlights. And can everyone see the plan I'm uh, showing on my screen now? Yep, we can. Okay, so this is the project location. Uh, this is Commonwealth Ave going from left to right on your screen. Um, Father Hurley he Drive and Thomas Moore Road are really the entrances to Boston College uh, to the south, and to the north is the Green Line MBTA BC station site. And Boyden Square, the island that we're concerned about is right in the middle of Com Ave. It's right at the over the years I got some street view photo. Again, another uh, view of the island looking westbound. And so the, the construction plan here, um, I'll just zoom in a little bit. Sorry. Here is. You good now? Whoops. So the, the project, again, excuse me, involves rebuilding the island. Uh, there'll be a, a set of curbing that is on the outside edge. And on the top of that curbing will be cobble stones, again, to deter people from walking on this surface. Uh, inside the island is another set of curbing with a a steel picket fence around the perimeter of the landscaped area again with one single gate but the object is to keep people from walking through the landscaped area and on the inside will be will be several trees and smaller plantings and shrubs we're going to relocate the existing blue welcome to brighton sign uh, to within the fence area um, we're going to relocate the street light that's out there the double pendant light that's out there uh, to provide lighting um, other than that, every uh, all the other features in the island, the catenary poles and some of the guy wires will remain the same. Um, but we hope that this will beautify the area and again provide some level of pedestrian safety in the 
We look at the cross section. Again, you can see that the, the, cur the curbing on the outside with the cobble inside um, on the plateau, and then another curb to the raised uh, landscaped area. The, the city uh, will be constructing the curbing and the cobble island area, and then the Friends of Boyden Square, who are the proponent of this project, will come by at a later date, and they will install the fencing and the landscaping and all the plantable soil uh, amenities, and they will maintain the landscaping within the island in perpetuity. And so that is basically the, the project in a nutshell. Steve, thanks for that uh, that summary. Uh, and just to sort of note the commonality between the previous item and this one, or the common elements, uh, it's great to see a, a, a pair of projects uh, that are improving the public realm, are improving the public health of a, of a corner of our city, are only made possible through collaboration between uh, residents in the, in the city of Boston uh, and improving the safety of our streets. So I uh, appreciate um, the entire team work on this project as well. Other questions or comments on uh, on this particular item? Steve, the Alarotic partners, the friends of the Boynton Square, they are aware of the possible timelines through which the public works department can make the improvements and there may be some uh, like the, the expectations are properly managed i'm going to assume in terms of the timelines of getting stuff really done is that correct yes yes we've been coordinating closely with uh, the public works staff zach wasmuth and uh, jack Alexis, and uh, we are aware that this the city intends to construct this project this spring uh, as, as part of other work that the city is doing, and the friends of Boynton Square are more than willing to meet that schedule in the city's timelines. Thank you. And yeah, Power Height, uh, Zach Wasmuth from Public Works. Yeah, we've been coordinating closely with this group, and coincidentally, these two um, projects, um, Boynton Square and the Codman Square improvements, are actually we're going to have them as as advertise them as one package together. Um, very shortly uh, for instruction. So all that will be uh, happening very soon. All right, thanks for the question, uh, Zach. Thanks for that as well. Um, other questions or comments from the PSC? Todd or Robbie? We're all set. Great. Any uh, comments from members of the public? Uh, I see none. Very good. Uh, then I'll entertain a motion on the site. I'll make a motion to. I make a motion to approve a joint petition by the City of Boston Public Works Department and the Friends of Boyden Square, the making of specific repairs within Commonwealth Ave, uh, as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Thank you so much. Thank you. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Madison Park Development Corporation doing business at 75 Dudley LLC for the acceptance of a pedestrian easement adjacent to the following public ways in Roxbury. Dudley Street on its southerly side at address number 75-81 between Guild Row and Kenilworth Street and Guild Row on its westerly side south of Dudley Street. This was new business on January 14th, 2021 and this has shown a, a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Pedestrian Easement Plan 75-81 Dudley Street, Roxbury, Boston, one sheet dated January 13th, 2021. Hi, uh, good morning, Commission members. This is Erin Joyce with Joyce Consulting Group. Um, I know we have two things on the agenda. We have the pedestrian easement and then the specific repair. Uh, we are actually still working um, still working on a requested potential street lighting cabinet relocation that would be associated with our specific repair and we're also still working on a tree management plan that may impact um, the pedestrian easement location possibly needing to widen it we have not been able to finalize that so we are actually hoping to request a continuance on both this uh, the pedestrian easement portion and the specific repair, a six week continuance, if that would be permissible. Uh, 
that that is uh, that is fine. We'll we'll take those as, as separate actions, Aaron. Uh, okay. And appreciate the update and, and appreciate your work on both um, well, the street trees and uh, I think the efforts to sort of make the to improve the sidewalk accessibility uh, through that through that stretch. Any questions or comments for Aaron about the the first item, the request for the continuance related to the specific repair? Members of the commission. Todd Robbie. Uh, no, no questions. That'll be March 11th. Would be six weeks. Perfect. Any members of the public? I see none. All right. I'll entertain a motion um, uh, to continue this item for six weeks until March 11th. I'll make a motion to continue public hearing item number three, as read into the record by the chair, to March 7th. 11th. 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 Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Uh, moving on to our next item uh, on a, a petition by Madison Park Development Corporation doing business as Dudley uh, LLC for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in Roxbury consisting of curb realignment as well as sidewalk and pedestrian ramp reconstruction. Dudley Street on the southerly side at address number 75-81 between Guild Row and Kenilworth Street and Guild Row on its westly side south of Dudley Street. This was new business on January 14, 2021, and this is shown on a set of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair and License Plan 75 81 Dudley Street, Roxbury, two sheets dated January 5th, 2021. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Aaron Joyce with Joyce Consulting Group representing um, this project for the specific repairs is just read into the record. Um, as mentioned on the previous application, um, as they relate to each other, um, we would be, we're still working through um, some some tree tree preservation, potential sidewalk widening, and the cabinet, potential cabinet movement at the corner of Gilbro and Dudley. So we would be requesting a six week continuance to March 11th for this application, if that would be permissible by the commission. Aaron, thanks so much. Uh, questions or comments um, by members of the commission? Todd or Abby? All set. Any members of the public? No. Very good. Then I'll entertain a motion on the second. I'll make a motion to continue public hearing item number four to March 11th. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Aaron, thanks so much. We'll see you on March 11th. Moving on to our next item on a petition by Mr. Owen Kiernan for the making of specific repairs within the following public ways in West Rockbury, consisting of curb realignment, sidewalk and road, roadway reconstruction, as well as new and relocated pedestrian ramps and form drain infrastructure. Locations are Lockdale Road, a private way open to public travel on its northeastly side, generally at address number 43, northwest of Washington Creek, and Washington Creek, generally at Lockdale Road and Clackamas Street. This was new business on January 13, 2021, and this has shown on a of plans entitled City of Boston Public Works Department Engineering Division Specific Repair Plan 43 Rockdale Road and Market Street, West Rock Street, two sheets dated January 11, 2021. Uh, yes, hi. Um, uh, my name is David Freed. I'm from Chew and Company, and um, I am here along with um, uh, Jared Harrigan from Owen Kiernan's office. Uh, we are here to um, uh, uh, come before you. Um, with our project, um, the scope of work is the uh, new curb realignment, the sidewalk and roadway, roadway reconstruction, and the new pedestrian ramps and crosswalks. Uh, can you see my screen in, in the presentation? Uh, we, we can't. Uh, we can't yet. Uh, or at least we can yet. If, uh, in the lower right-hand corner, you have your mouse or cursor over the lower right-hand right corner. You'll see a present now button. No, there you go. Can you see it now? Absolutely. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. So, um, as uh, as we presented um, previously uh, two weeks ago, um, this is a new um, 39, uh, 38 unit project uh, uh, in Roslindale, just off of Washington Street on a private way called Lockdale Road. Um, it's 38 units with 39 park garage parking spaces. Um, it can be seen here uh, in the red the red rectangle. It's a presently undeveloped site. So uh, we need to do some improvements on Lockdale and Kitson, and we're asked to also extend the sidewalk back to Lockdale Road and to provide some crosswalks and new pedestrian ramps to cross Washington Street uh, to uh, allow residents and uh, the community uh, better access to the, uh, uh, the bus service and T-stops on the office side of the street. Uh, this is the uh, 
present condition of the area. Uh, where these vans are is our future site. And here's a plan of the proposed project. Uh, here's Lockdale Road. There's Kitson. And as we get to, so our scope of work is in addition to paving Kitson Road and providing sidewalks and curbing, uh, we're asked to um, uh, provide uh, uh, a new curb apron here, pedestrian ramps, and a crosswalk, as well as a new pedestrian ramp and a crosswalk uh, across Washington Street. Uh, a couple issues were raised at the uh, new business hearing, one of which was um, one, what is the distance between the existing utility poles that are going to be um, uh, encapsulated on our new sidewalk and uh, the uh, adjacent lot lines. and um, the clear width between the light pole, the utility pole, and our lot line is 6.1 feet at the one closest to Kitson Road. And mounted on top of that is an LED street light. And then um, the other utility pole, uh, there's a 4.7 foot clear width between the pole and the adjacent side of the existing building at 3931 Washington Street. That also has an LED pole um, for street lighting. In addition to that, um, our project has extensive uh, building mounted lighting along Kitson, actually on all four sides. Uh, we have, um, I don't know if I can make this larger. We have lighting every 18 feet along Kitson Road. Um, and uh, in this detail, you can see the, they're well mounted here. Uh, they're dark sky compliant. The fixture similar to that. And um, the other issue we were asked to discuss or, or uh, uh, look into was uh, providing a raised um, crosswalk um, at the intersection of Lockdown, Washington. Uh, the civil engineer, I think, is on this call. Um, if he's available, that would be great. Uh, if not, I can kind of go over what he discussed to me. He, Basically, there's, um, there's some grading issues on the right side here, uh, and it would require, um, or require raising the sidewalk up seven inches uh, to, I guess, there's kind of a crown in the road, so that we'd have to raise the sidewalk up, up seven inches, and then we'd have to feather back, he said, about 15 feet um, into Washington Street, and then feather the asphalt road bed back about 20 feet into Lockdale to make the grading work. Um, but he did say it is doable. So uh, we defer to the commission on uh, what they would like to see there. Uh, David, thanks so much for that that summary. Maybe taking those sequentially, I guess, first on the lighting and then on the, the crossing. Any, or in general, any questions or comments on uh, what David presented? Chief, <coughs> Chief, uh, my comments are centered around the fact that Lockdale is still a private way, okay? And we need to uh, temper and balance our responses and our comments towards uh, towards the fact that this is a private way. So that, that's the starting point. Uh, so even this uh, race crosswalk, Amy, I'm just trying to be mindful of the incremental improvements that one can achieve for pedestrian safety and how it gets feathered back onto a private way and the collateral concerns I have, Commissioner, sorry, Chief, is the new residents that are off even further private way, uh, they will, since that whole building complex does about Lockdale, if, if in the future there's a petition to uh, convert this private way to a public street, uh, all of those individuals will be participating in the costs. So, uh, we need to be very careful and mindful of managing and tempering the expectations of those residents that are brand new, uh, a welcome addition to the neighborhood, but they may not, I'm not sure whether all of them might be aware that this is a private street and expecting uh, 
public services on a private street. So those are the concerns. So my first question would be, Amy, would it matter whether this is a public street or a private street in the in the domain of? No, because the, the crossing is is maintaining the crossing is is the crossing of a public way, right? So like you're crossing a private way, but you are on a public sidewalk crossing to a public sidewalk. So that whole raised crossing would just be a continuation of our sidewalk out there. Um, I think that the only implication from a private way issue would be the, you know, to make sure that the water and sewer stuff is all um, sorted out. But uh, the asphalt can feather back into the private way that doesn't have a ton of implication any more than reconstructing and repaving of it would. Um, but the crossing is, is, is the crossing of a, is the continuation of a public path of travel. Thank you, Amy. And the lighting issues, uh, David? Uh, it is still a private way. You are still responsible for adequate lighting, uh, and we hope that the lighting standards, uh, the lighting fixtures that we have selected, conform to the IEEE lighting standards or the IES lighting standards. So this way, if and when this uh, street, if the city's petition to accept this street as a public street, uh, it uh, doesn't create incremental cost on the city's part to upgrade the street lighting system. Okay. So whether it is public or private, we are duty bound to provide adequate lighting because the new tenants or the homeowners should not be penalized because of the, the little nuances of private streets in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. Thank you, sir. All right, Amy. Thank you for those comments. Uh, other questions or comments from members of the commission? Todd or Robbie? We are all set with this one. Got it. Um, I defer both to Para and Amy on this, um, but. Uh, I wonder whether this makes sense to uh, uh, entertain a motion on this contingent upon a sort of a final conversation between the proponent, uh, BTD, PIC, and Public Works Department on the race crossing just to understand the specific implications that we might have for Washington Street grading and otherwise. But, uh, Amy, more our thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think that we didn't want this to be a big, profound change, right? Like, there's already seems pretty flat out there. Um, so to make this, uh, you know, like, we're doing a lot to enhance these crossings here. These are bus stops that we were really trying to make uh, more comfortable and accessible. Um, so I, I think that if it's attainable uh, and, and simple enough, I don't want to chase this forever, and I don't want to chase it all the way down Washington Street or all the way into a private way. Um, but if this can be done uh, just by uh, grading modifications, then I think that we should do it. Um, I don't want to cause a sizable cost increase or anything like that. Um, but I think that we were really trying to make this corner feel more comfortable and accessible. Um, and I think that that would go a long way to help, especially considering it's a, a bus stop with pretty high ridership. All right. Thanks, Any other questions or comments on, uh, on this? All right, then I'll, uh, I'll entertain a motion uh, on this on this item, motion to approve this item. Uh, again, contingent upon just a final conversation between the proponent and uh, uh, BTD and Public Works on the, on the race crossing. I'll make a motion um, to approve a petition by Mr. Owen Kiernan for the making of specific repairs in Lockdale Road in Washington Street as read into the record by the chair contingent upon final uh, resolution of the raised crosswalk uh, with BTD and Public Works. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. David, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye -bye. Our sixth item is out of petition by Mr. Thomas Mitchell, Mr. Kenneth Fogarty, Mr. Greg Donovan, and Meridian Bank Corp for the uh, abandonment of any and all rights to travel the public may have had within Ellery Court, private way, open public travel in South Boston from Ellery Street to its northeasterly terminus. This was new business on January 14th, 2021. And this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department, Engineering Division, Abandonment Plan, Ellery Court, South Boston, one sheet dated September 22nd, 2020. Thank you. Um, uh, Chief Osgood, Commissioners and staff, my name is George Morancy. Uh, I'm an attorney. I represent uh, uh, Malcolm Barber and uh, Niall Dowdle. 
uh, who are the uh, purchasers and developers uh, of the property located at 44 Ellery Street, which is immediately adjacent uh, to Ellery Court. Um, it doesn't look like my screen is visible, is that correct? Can anyone uh, see my screen? So your uh, your screen is visible, but I think you're you're clicked on a window with your the hearing. Now you're perfect. Now you're showing the point. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry. Um, and uh, this was new business a couple of weeks ago. The area in question is shown here on uh, on the plan by uh, CEC Engineering, uh, the Mitchell's residence uh, noted uh, here to the right. Um, as I previously noted during the uh, the new business hearing. Uh, this is a case where the entirety of the area in question is owned in fee uh, by the Mitchells. This is not a case where a budding property owner is on the side owned to the midpoint, which we sometimes see with private ways. Um, there is currently um, a, a, a conduit here um, by Comcast. I've been in touch with Comcast, uh, and uh, they are okay with uh, the um, the uh, uh, discontinuance of this, uh, there's going to be a new easement area uh, for the cable that uh, we've already been negotiating with Comcast. Uh, the proposal is for a new 19 unit building here on the site. It would occupy a portion of what is now uh, a driveway for the parking area behind 46, 44 Ellery Street, uh, which I can show here uh, from an area view, aerial view. So this is Ellery Court. Uh, this uh, really has no function at this point. Except George, as, sorry, uh, your, uh, the screen, at least for me, that you're showing is, mm -hmm. uh, is the PIC hearing rather than I think the aerial photo that you're looking to show. There you go. Hmm. Okay, okay. Can, so you can't see the, uh, the aerial now? We can, yep. Okay, yeah, I think there's a bit of a delay. Uh, I think that was the problem. for some reason. There's a bit of a delay once I bring up my screen. So this is the, this is the aerial. Uh, this is the uh, this is Ellery Court, the area in question, which, as I said, with an existing curb cut here, is a driveway for the parking located behind uh, 4446 Ellery Street. This is where the new building would go. The property owners are Mr. Fogarty here, uh, East Boston Savings Bank here, and then this portion here of the East Boston Savings Lot, East Boston Savings Bank uh, parking lot and driveway is owned by Greg Dunneman, uh, who's also uh, joined in the petition. Um, the only um, changes to uh, the public way would be, um, you know, the, uh, I guess, the repositioning, perhaps re relocation of the existing curb cut uh, and, uh, and the curb flares onto Ellery Street. Uh, I believe that uh, the city of Boston, the uh, BPDA, uh, will uh, perhaps be requiring um, a setback here. but. Uh, I'm not sure if we're going to be doing a pedestrian easement or not, not to my knowledge. And certainly all that we're here for today is the, uh, the abandonment of public rights in uh, Ellery Court. Great. Um, with that, I'll, I'll pause. I'll take any questions that, uh, that members may have. The, the um, sort of Comcast support or Comcast approval of this, is that something which you've shared with PSC already? Uh, I, I may have spoken with Todd about it. I'm not certain, uh, but uh, I can certainly do that. I have uh, I have emails from Al Rugman at Comcast uh, that I can share, and uh, right. Al is, uh, is is fine with what we're doing. Perfect. John, is that sufficient? Uh, yeah, if we can just get copies of those emails, uh, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll, I'll send them to you, Todd, immediately after we conclude this hearing. Perfect. Thank you. The, the easement needs to come before the abandonment. I'm sorry, I missed that, Amy. Uh, the easement needs to come before the abandonment. Yeah, before before the easement or before the abandonment. The easement yeah. needs to come before the abandonment. Right. So the easement needs to be in place. Comcast has rights, right? Like, so the, it it needs to because it's a street. Uh, they that needs to just be done um, before we record this abandonment. So we just need. Oh, I understand. Okay. If they're okay, but we if you're giving them, uh, le you know, an easement that should be right. part of uh, what. Is going through before the abandonment. So the new the new easement should be shown on the on the abandonment plan. Yeah, ideally the booking page. Okay. Yeah, so we, just won't, we just won't be able to uh, record the PIC documents until the easement is recorded. 
Right, I, I understand that, and, we'll, and I'll certainly take care of that. Thank you. Maybe thank you for that. George, this is PJ. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, I can. George, could you please reiterate the fact that the property owners you are representing who have petitioned this project have 100% underlying fee ownership for the whole street that is being under consideration for abandonment. Is that correct? 100% fee ownership? Yes, that is correct. Thank you, sir. So, which basically means that any other person that is abutting that property does not have any legal rights towards access. That is correct, and that was established by the uh, title investigation. Thank you, George. Truly appreciate you reiterating that Thank point. you. Okay. Other questions or comments, Barra? Thank you for that. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? All set. All right. Many members of the public? Uh, I see none. All right. I'll entertain a motion on this item. I make a motion to approve a petition, a joint petition by Mr. Thomas Mitchell, Mr. Kenneth Fogarty, Mr. Greg Donovan, and Meridian Bank Corp. Incorporated for the abandonment of any and all rights to travel the public may have within Ellery Court in Boston as further read into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. George, thanks so much. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Our final item on the public hearing agenda is a is on a petition by NSTAR Electric Company doing business as Eversource Energy for a grant of location to install new electrical infrastructure within Arlington Avenue, a public way in Charlestown, on its northeasterly side, generally across the North Street. This was new business on January 14th, 2021, and this is shown on a plan entitled City of Boston Public Works Department uh, Engineering Division. Grant of location plan, Eversource, Arlington Ave, RCS, Boston, one sheet, day of November 23rd, 2020. All right, good morning, uh, Chief and members of the commission. Dominic Rinaldi with the BSC Group on behalf of Eversource. Uh, I believe uh, Ali Klein of Eversource is also on the line and just scrolling through the uh, other members. I don't see anyone else. I apologize to uh, my good friends at Eversource if you're on here and I missed you. Um, we'll present if that is okay with you. Yep, that's perfect. All right. Everybody have the plan up? Joe's funny. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, so as we discussed, the uh, and as you mentioned, the project is essentially removing a reverse current switch from the MBTA facility on Arlington Street. Or Arlington Avenue, excuse me, Arlington Street is a different place, Arlington Avenue, um, and relocating it out into the, the public way in a, uh, in a weatherproof enclosure. Um, the issue at hand is that um, Eversource doesn't have 24 seven access to the MBTA facility. And at times um, it's difficult to make the arrangements to get in there when they actually need to access the switch. So the project consists of uh, installing the RCS in an, in, Pad mounted, pad mounted enclosure at the back of the sidewalk and the installation were about 20 feet of, of uh, electric cable back to an existing electric manhole and, and making that connections. Uh, at the request of the Disabilities Commission, we will also be um, fixing the, uh, the pedestrian ramps at the on either side of the driveway to the MBTA facility. Uh, it's, as we discussed at the new business hearing, it's a fairly straightforward project. Um, the intent is to start this in the spring, and really it shouldn't take more than maybe a couple of weeks at most to, to install. Uh, with that, I'm certainly open to any questions. So right there, Scott. Questions or comments? Power, go ahead. Is this uh, your structure, is it one of your standard uh, controller cabinets? Yeah, it's actually uh, fairly small, but it's it's pretty typical you know, anything else you'd see uh, for Eversource enclosures, it's it's 21 inches wide by 25 inches um, long along the width of the, the street, and uh, it's only 51 inches high. So Thank it's probably say. maybe a little smaller than what you'd normally see. But All right. <laughs> and the immediate abutting is obviously the MBTA property. Yes. Got it. 
And Sarah, you are fine with it. I'm going to assume otherwise we wouldn't be here. Yes, um, we're um, fine with this, and we appreciate um, the proponents' openness to also fixing the adjacent um, pedestrian ramp that's in rough shape. Great, All right, Sarah. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Todd or Abby? Um, all set. All right. Any members of the public? I see none. All right. Then I'll entertain a motion on the I'll make a motion to approve a petition by NSTAR Electric Company for a grant of location in Arlington Street as read right into the record by the chair. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So Aye. All right. Thank you so Perfect. Much. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Our, that concludes the public hearing portion. Uh, moving on to the new business section. Our first and only item is A Street, West 2nd Street, South Boston, a grant of location on a vision by Vicinity Energy Boston, Inc. Uh, good morning, Chief and Commission members. My name is Scott McBurney. I'm a Vice President of Vicinity, Vicinity Energy here in Boston. Uh, Vicinity appreciates the opportunity to present the proposed expansion of our green steam system into the Four Point area to the members of the Public Improvement Commission in the City of Boston. <clears throat> the City is here today requesting a grant of location for the areas identified in the associated design drawings. <clears throat> the execution of our proposed project will provide a source of sustainable green energy to the real estate developments in progress in the Four Point area. The project will support the City of Boston's Climate Action Plan and goal of achieving zero net carbon buildings. The general scope of this project is to extend our existing district energy system with a subsurface 16-inch welded steel steam line and a 6-inch welded steel condensate return line in the roadway along West 2nd Street and A Street. Both lines will be encased in concrete with access manholes located every several hundred feet along the line. The design and construction uh, of this pipeline will exceed uh, codes and standards to be built with local labor supporting the local construction market. Um, our team members joining us here today are Ken Stanley, President of Trimon Engineering, and uh, Brendan Kearns, who is the Lead Project Engineer for Trimon, and Jason Clark, representing Engineering for Vicinity Energy. Uh, we're happy to present more details of the previously submitted plans or entertain questions from the members of the Commission. Scott, thank you for that. Do you mind just sort of walking us through the, the, the general project extents um, up, up along A Street and the, um, and the path here uh, you're going to take? Sure. Uh, we'll turn it over to Ken Stanley to um, to present the details. Uh, good morning, commissioners, and thank you for uh, inviting us to the meeting today. I'm going to share my screen. Okay. While you are presenting your screen, Chief, uh, I may have been uh, distracted here. Uh, has this utility, has the city, uh, are we aware of this utility because it seems like it's the first time I'm hearing about these very nice people and just want to make sure that we administratively recognize these utility companies uh, as a utility in the city of Boston. Um, I, it's the first time I'm hearing about this vicinity, Energy Boston. Chief, unless uh, you all have had a... Uh, Scott, let me correct me wrong, vicinity is the new name for, for uh, the OEM. I don't have a I, 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 Yeah, that's correct. Um, My bad. Why yes. are you up so well? Yeah, sorry about that, Barbara. So, so you're on a yeah. viola with a new name, or is it a new financial structure? Yes, in January, uh, Veolia divested the district energy systems in North America, and uh, we formed a new company called the Synergy Energy. Uh, our headquarters continue to be here in Boston. Uh, many of the players that you know from the, uh, the district steam system are all still in place. Um, we've just uh, divested ourselves from the, the large company of Veolia. And uh, thank you so much for clarifying the, my thought patterns in my brain. And I'm going to assume that irrespective of your change in command structure, you all will still continue to work with the city to uh, manage your assets because I think over the last years, uh, some of your assets, as, even though they serve much needed customers, Every once in a while has had a tiny bit of a hiccup here and there, and we met multiple times to ensure that your assets are functioning to meet your needs as much as the city's needs. And I'm going to assume you will continue to not honor, but uh, work with the city to manage a collective situation. Is that assumption correct on my part? 
That is 100% correct, sir. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Mara. Thanks, Scott. Uh, can everyone walk us through the, the plan? That'd be, that'd be great. Yes, thank you very much. Can everyone see my drawing set? We can. Okay, thank you very much. So our, our project uh, begins at the intersection of uh, West 2nd Street and A Street uh, in South Boston. There is an existing 24 inch main uh, along West 2nd Street. Uh, uh, currently, um, uh, uh, within the within completely within the roadway. So our project is really uh, two pieces where we would extend that 24 inch main uh, down West 2nd Street to accommodate customers uh, further down the road, approximately 300 feet, but also teeing off of that existing 24 inch main and running approximately uh, 2,400 feet up to uh, Neko Court um, and Neko Street, crossing the uh, Mass Highway um, uh, tunnel system, and then continuing on to customers on Neko Street. So for the purposes of this meeting, we'll be discussing uh, from West 2nd Street uh, to the beginning of Neko Street, uh, crossing the, uh, the highway tunnel system. So as we as we move along, so that's our, our general location with regards to the system. Um, we are entirely within the traveled ways along A Street. Uh, as Scott mentioned, we have a series of uh, manholes uh, along the route for access and or valving. Um, the equipment that's typically uh, seen in this uh, type of design, again, the pipe is 16 inch uh, welded steel pipe. Uh, there'll be a series of expansion joints, guides and anchors along the system to control the thermal expansion of uh, the steel pipe along its route. So as the pipe um, moves steam along the system and bends and turns along the, along the route, uh, the steel can experience uh, expansion. And we use those guides and anchors to control that expansion such that we don't damage the pipe, the insulation, the facility itself. So generally speaking, as we move along the route here, you'll see both in plan view and profile view, our planned location of the, ste uh, the steam main and those facilities, both horizontally and vertically. So generally, that's that's our alignment in these two locations, and we'll go uh, sheet by sheet. And uh, I won't get into too many details unless you'd like me to clarify things. Uh, but you'll see generally here we have plan uh, and profile view uh, to describe some of the facility that you're seeing uh, in plan view. These are anchors. Uh, these are expansion joints. Uh, and there's a series of guides along the route that control and help guide the steel main through its expansion and through its anchor systems. So that's the facility that you see here. Uh, the pipe is also, uh, uh, you have 16 inch steel main. It's covered by four inches of mineral wool insulation to maintain its heat quality. We also encase it in 34 inches of concrete encasement also for heat retention, but also for protection from um, cracking and, and exterior uh, um, uh, 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 problems that we may, may occur uh, along the route. So, so to that sir. point, and, that, and you were sort of, uh, you sort of, you have a question, in the proximity of power, cable, telecom, all sorts of other things. Um, how does how does how does one ensure that sort of the proximity of uh, this line doesn't impact or melt uh, any of the adjacent utilities? Yeah. So the again the, the the insulation that is designed for this pipe is intended to not also not only maintain the heat within the steam itself, but also the exterior uh, of the of the facility itself, as well as the concrete. The concrete temperature per se um, varies depending upon soil conditions um, and depth per se, uh, but also based on distance from other utilities. As you can see here in this in this alignment, it's obviously a very busy street underground with existing utilities. In order to maintain um, appropriate separations, um, the pipe is deep 
Um, we're op we're uh, proposing to be anywhere from you know seven to ten to twelve feet deep, uh, and we do that for a number of reasons. Um, you'll see here where our manhole proposed manhole locations uh, are generally deep as well. The pipe itself wants to be pitched in order for us to collect the condensate water that will occur as the steam moves through the steel main. So we pitch that system to make collection points within the manholes. Um, there are traps that open up when it reaches a certain level and then forces that condensate back into a pipe that runs on top of the, the existing, the new steam main and brings condensate water back to a collection location. So the, the main itself wants to be pitched in order to capture condensate in those collection points. So we're, we're managing both horizontal separation from other utilities, vertical separation, but also providing the pitch needed in order to collect the condensate to be able to move it back to a collection point. Um, I hope that described that. Okay. Um, so you see, as we go down down the street here, we are um, we're at varying distances and depth, varying uh, separations from utilities. This obviously was an extremely um, tedious effort to be able to find a location for this, uh, but we did uh, work very closely with Boston Water and Sewer. Uh, on a number of iterations to be able to provide the separation and protection they needed from their utilities, which in so doing that also allowed a fair amount of separation from existing utilities such as electric uh, uh, phone and cable and so on. Um, we have submitted notification to those utilities. Um, we've received some responses, but not all. Uh, but as the project moves forward, we'll continue to reach out and uh, work with those utilities to ensure um, their awareness of, of, of uh, our, our efforts here. Um, so as we move along the line, um, the intersections uh, obviously become um, also heavily populated with utilities. Uh, but again, we found location that works for both the steam main and the existing utilities around it. Kenneth, do you mind me interrupting you for a sure. second? Because yes, I sir. think you were in a beautiful spot. Uh, the, the previous slide, that uh, that one, that one. Perfect, sir. Thank you. Uh, Kenneth, uh, again, amazing project as always. You know, the city has a long-standing relationship with, with uh, Piola, and I need to teach myself to say your name correctly, otherwise bad teaching. Uh, but gentlemen, a couple of thoughts here. Again, bringing back not the high points, but some of the more awkward moments we've had in the past. Uh, you recognize the spaghetti uh, system of utilities that are underneath. Uh, that's, that, that's a reason why your design engineers didn't draw a straight line. Okay, So it translates to two fronts. Drama you will experience during construction and possible adjustment. So that's one. That translates to the amount of time a street may be out of use, okay, the construction management side. I have multiple concerns, which I'm 100% certain you can solve. We just need to be on the same page. Getting concurrence from all the utilities that are going to be adjacent to you. I know you have reached out to them, Kenneth, but please, please, please impress upon them the need for answers. It's like either speak or don't complain later when they are electrical or telecommunications lines should melt due to whatever the reasons. You and I, we both know all the, the fun we've had in the past, so let's try and avoid us being dragged into a private matter between your assets and a private utility. So uh, I would be very much in favor of us having a public hearing only when you have had the at least the critters that are right next to you. Okay, so that's one. The zigzagging, obviously, uh, is a, not a concern. Uh, it, it's an ongoing uh, construction management issue. I don't recall whether there are any MBTA bus lines that are going on A Street. And the final thing is, this whole segment of A Street from here up to the, you know, it, it's in fairly decent shape. And after you are done, it's going to create a massive scar. So just to relieve my temperature or anxiety, what are you proposing in terms of 
roadway restoration, and I'm going to assume that it is just not going to be a trench repair, keeping in mind that you are going to tear the heck out of it. Uh, yes, so from a, from a restoration perspective, um, we um, will work with the city to understand what the restoration requirements are, uh, whether it be uh, a, a half travel lane or, um, or the entire um, roadway um, re uh, repaving. We haven't frankly gone to that level of understanding yet with regards to the trench repair and or the repaving, but we can certainly address that. Uh, as so, needed. So, sorry, Kenneth. Um, yes. You add, and this is all my fault if I don't remember the last time I spoke to you or those that are on this board, but that's my bad, okay? Not you folks. But if you have heard me utter these words for the last 20 plus years, for a project of this nature, the minimum starting point will be a curb to curb overlay. And it'll, because you are digging so deep, uh, that's the minimum. Uh, we just want to make sure that the adjacent utilities in itself are not going to be settling, okay, with this type of trench construction. Uh, I don't recall off the top of my head whether there are gas lines that are here. So there's a whole domain of uh, utility interactions and utility settlements and sub, sub work that needs to be done, let alone ensuring that the road doesn't uh, dip and be compromised plus the riding surface. So I'm, I'm absolutely certain that your engineers do understand what the city has been looking for over the years. And also when you are going near the, uh, the may I stop, the interstate, if you can get to that area, we just want to make sure that the state is okay. Uh, all right, so the, you know, you all are pros at this thing. I feel like an idiot telling you things that are so obvious, but I feel compelled to verbalize it because when I do drive around the city and see construction work, sometimes I wonder whether people are hearing what I'm saying or whether I'm speaking French. Okay? So just want to put it out there so that I think it's lost in the translation. Understood completely. And we are we are working with MassDoc currently through their SHAP system, uh, through their design review process. So. Uh, we've been uh, already through the review package, so they've reviewed the package, and they're moving it through the design review, uh, through the 25, 50, 75 percent, so on, review process. So um, we've provided them um, a standard package that actually one that we have did previously on uh, Nashua Street a number of years ago when we crossed the tunnel system there. So we were very um, uh, understanding of what the requirements are, so we've met that requirement of data that they would need in order to review this appropriately. Thank you, Ken. I truly appreciate that You're very welcome. thoughtful and diligent work which you folks do. Thank you, sir. But, but Commissioner, I would add, this is Scott McBurney, that um, uh, we do certainly appreciate your perspective and have the, the players who have been working with you for the last 20 years are still here. Uh, Mr. Sylvia, I think you probably recall uh, yes. He is running the operation that's responsible for this uh, this project, and our construction team is the same ones who, uh, as Ken just mentioned, did the Nashua Street project. So we, we do completally and totally understand your perspective. And Thank you, Scott. Take as much pride in uh, in keeping uh, the city of Boston's streets looking clean and neat um, when we are working in them. Yeah, the punchline, if I can summarize so that I can shut up as soon as possible, two things. The end condition of the street, okay, that's the, you know, after everything has settled, and then the other parties, we really don't like getting dragged into a third party uh, issue because then I feel like the principal being dragged into the conference room having to contest between you and a third party where your construction compromised their assets. And then at the end of the day, it is the Public Improvement Commission that gives you the grant of location. So you need to help us, not for the PIC to get dragged into you compromising or the possible compromising because I cannot be judgmental. So help us, Scott, so that we have a smooth execution of your project. Okay, understood. Thank you so much. 
I know that you guys uh, put together a plan and engaged Ed Hesford on the construction management piece of that, but I, I think we need to kind of come out the other side. This is a pretty invasive uh, bit of construction that we have going on here. Um, so I think that we want to understand the time implications, the staging implications, all the things that you're going to have here. We have a bunch of buses with very high ridership that come down this street. And I think that we also need to start coordinating with those uh, to understand that in addition to a lot of uh, shuttle buses coming out of the Channel Center. Um, so I think all of that needs to kind of come together um, in, up to and inclusive of any final repaving. Um, if that's going curb to curb, that's going to be a uh, feat in and of itself. Um, but I, I do want to understand that we're okay and comfortable with the, the construction management plan um, before we approve the, this in its specific iteration. Okay. Um and Amy, I'm sorry if I, I didn't get the information to you soon enough. We did work very closely with Ed uh, uh, Hesford to uh, uh, address his concerns, and um, but we'll, we'll we'll continue to supply information. So if there's more information um, that you'd like to see with regards to, um, we have our, our drawing set here. We have our traffic management plans that we supplied as part of the construction management package. Um, with that information that you'd like to see additionally be a uh, a staging of time per se or uh, i want an okay from ed i'm, I'm sorry i want an okay from ed oh, okay it did <laughs> understood, you were understood. Have to with him i want him to be okay with what we're proposing um and believe that you can construct it where you show it um, but beyond that, like, I don't have, I, I just want to make sure that those details are ironed out um, before we are approving, like, something very specific. Understood. Um, just for information purposes, we, we, we had three rounds of review with uh, Ed's team and, and made the appropriate changes. Uh, uh, and that's what got us here today, obviously. Yep, that, that's we perfect. We completely. memorialize that um, and that we're, you know, we're not still trying to um, deal with anything that would have potential uh, modifications to the location. Understood. Thank you. On a semi-related note, um, there is a large um, block of accessible parking spaces that are located along A Street. Um, so as you work with um, BTD on the construction management plan, um, we'd appreciate it if you could reach out to um, the Mayor's Commission for Persons with Disabilities to coordinate the relocation of those spaces within the neighborhood um, so those spaces um, don't get lost um, during construction. Um, additionally, um, if more information could be provided about um, the locations of any surface structures and making sure if we could keep them out of the crosswalks um, as much as possible, that would be appreciated. Understood. In the, in the surface structures you're, you're addressing would be manhole covers? Correct. Okay. Crosswalks and bike lanes. Understood. <laughs> and I think we did pretty well at missing those, but we'll make sure that uh, we address them specifically. Okay. Um, so as we go forward, there's more of the same. You know, we've we've uh, in in uh, coordination with the utility, uh, Boston Water and Sewer. Um, we are using some strategies where you'll see here that um, we're actually will be uh, removing and replacing their line, so we would be directly below them in, in certain locations uh, to avoid other relocations that may have impacted other utilities. The other thing we took into account and was very diligent about, as you mentioned, the gas mains. Um, we also work for uh, the natural gas companies as well, and we understand those uh, offset requirements from their plastic utilities uh, and tried to ensure that we were on the opposite side of the street from those plastic utilities. Crossings, obviously, we couldn't address and avoid all crossings, but in a parallel sense, we're able to avoid and be on the opposite side from a plastic system. We may be closer to the steel or cast iron. However, um, uh, those are less problematic with regards to any temperature issues. Um, so as, as we go down the street again, and, and I, I presume this is a lot, you know, where we bend out to take advantage of additional width in the street, uh, we'll address the parking issues as well. Um, um, we get some open area here. We're able to run quite 
quite nicely um, in a somewhat more standard operating situation, construction methods. Um, but frankly, uh, at the depth we're at, um, we did be able to achieve a lot of avoidance with regards to other utilities and such. Um, and our contractors are very um, uh, experienced and well equipped to support those existing utilities as we cross them. And then we get to the, the tunnel at uh, Mass Highway. And again, um, it, we are shallow in this particular location. You can see where the tunnel is relatively close to the surface. There are also existing uh, drain lines and sewer lines across the top of the tunnel. Um, so we had to address that with Mass Highway. Um, we're also providing a similar separation that we had on Nashua Street with a very uh, similar crossing methodology. Um, so again, um, using a, the, the methods of success that we had before, prior to um, and improving upon that if we could, uh, but this is what the Mass Highway is reviewing currently. Um, once we turn down Neko, Neko Street, it becomes a much more open situation. Okay, uh, yeah, that's where we, I'm sorry. Sorry, you're going a little bit too yeah. fast for me. Yes, sir. Sorry. Uh, again, just trying to make sure that you folks know what is needed before you come back to a public hearing. Yes, sir. So this conversation with Mass DOT, I haven't had a chance to circle back with them to find out whether they have finished their review. And I am fairly certain I may not get around to doing that thing. So it is prudent upon you to let Mr. Lining know, I either, you know, PIC's chief engineer know that those approvals have been secured by Mass DOT before you come to the public hearing. Because from the DOT side, it is we that is giving a grant of location. And I need to make sure, when I say I, the commission needs to make sure that we are the left hand is not doing something that is making things awkward for the right hand also uh who is your who is your consultant that is doing the site evaluation and doing this design because we want to make sure that they are working very closely with our water and sewer commission staff members because i think you all know uh, in years past we've relied on the sewer commission uh, commission member to give us some guidance on the, the challenges towards all, not just water and sewer assets, but everyone else's asset when you go so deep, okay? So yes. uh, hopefully your consultants have had a conversation with the Water and Sewer Commission because the PIC is responsible for all subsurface utilities, but we have to be extra sensitive to the sewer commission's assets that are there. So hopefully Understood. you all have had a conversation with the sewer commission members and everyone is, you know, happy. And yes, yes, we have. So we, we've worked with uh, Mr. Sullivan, Mr. Malara uh, at the Water and Sewer Commission, and we had a, at least four to, four to five reviews with them. We actually have a signed set of drawings now that they have approved uh, this route. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, for, thank you for putting that on the record. And please add that thing again at the public hearing also. Okay. Yes, sir. So that should give a level of comfort to the other utilities. But again, I'm more concerned about the third party litigation challenges we've had in the past where we get dragged in because someone is complaining to us that your assets were compromising their assets. And then they say, we are the ones, we being the commission, are the ones who gave these grants of locations and drags us into a third party fight. And those moments are not happy moments for us. As, as for you, okay? Understood. So, Understood, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that brings us to the end of the uh, the public right of way uh, that would be uh, addressing the, the the grant of location. Any further questions or something else you'd like to see? That was, that was really quite helpful. So a couple of things I think between now in the public hearing and, and based upon this list, um, love your thoughts about sort of when the right time to have the public hearing on the construction management plan to make sure that uh, we've got the edit signed off on that. Uh, to Sarah's points, uh, that there's a, a plan about the relocation for uh, the accessible parking as part of that uh, construction management plan uh, that we can just sort of do a review and affirm that any 
uh, any manhole covers or any other sort of uh, iron that's going to be on the surface of the street is not in the crosswalk or not in a, in a bike lane. And that, that we get that sign off uh, from uh, adjacent utility companies as well as MassDOT, and then it's clear that they understand your plans and they understand uh, and they're comfortable with uh, the location. Commissioner, did I capture those things correctly? Mara, go ahead. Yeah, Chief, uh, just one tiny, yes. tiny other little thing. And I'm having a brain burp moment here. Sarah McCammon's neighborhood organization, Chief, okay. why am I forgetting? Yeah, the four point yeah, four point neighborhood. Yeah. Chief, can you imagine if they are not aware of this? Right, yeah. how, how, how awkward that would be for us. So, uh, what I don't know, Mueller team, Kenneth, is how much does the four point neighborhood association and the homeowners that are, you know, springing up like, you know, sprouts all along A Street, how much are they aware of this project? Because it's going to make their life a little bit more interesting with the vibration, okay? You, you know that all the, of course, all the complaints the city is going to get through our, you know, call centers. And it will be really, really awkward if we say, oh, geez, the PIC didn't have a thumbs up from the mayor's office of neighborhood services people or the four point neighborhood association or the various politicians so guys help us to manage this so that the pic doesn't get dragged into the bad person simply because we allow you to dig the holes understood we'll work diligently with the uh, vicinity's community outreach and understand what and, it'll be, and how much information that would be yes and it'll be good if someone from the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services and or the Four Point Neighborhood Association testify on your behalf at the public hearing saying that yes, uh, Viola is the best thing. Sorry, your new company, me. Okay, you guys are sorry. It's okay. Uh, but you all are the consumer, uh, you know, neighbors, professionals, you all have reached out. When they verbalize <clears throat> those comments on your behalf, it makes it a whole lot easier for us to release. Mm -hmm. The contents of these states should it become a third party litigation issue. Understood. Thank you, sirs. Uh, yeah, the Four Point Neighborhood Association, like we are very actively, as the Transportation Department, engaged with them right now about a lot of concerns that they have very specifically with A Street, right? And now, granted, a lot of that is about accessibility in the sidewalks, et cetera, um, but we do want them to understand what this is and what the scope of it is. Uh, there's lots of projects that are also happening up and into NECO. Uh, I know that you're not showing that because that is those are private ways. Uh, first thing I'll note is that they might not remain private ways, so that that should be a part of the consideration. Also, if we think about the the piece of NECO Street that goes out to Melcher, and you consider the natural uh, extension of that into what is now Gillette property, but if, if we uh, consider that that will be developed in the future, um, we will want to go straight down NECO Street, um, and you're now cutting that vertically. Uh, so we will want to make sure that we have the ability to clear you with ease um, to, to push anything um, straight down uh, Neko Street if it were to go from Melcher all the way um, out in a, in a straight line and not make the dog lick. Okay, just to make sure I understand the uh... Okay. So yeah, you come off of A Street and you're on Neko Street and then right. Neko Street makes a 90 degree turn. Yes. Uh, that 90 degree turn, if, if we took the natural extension all the way from Melter Street um, West and didn't make the dog leg, that is a high likelihood of a road in the future. Um, so I think that we want to make sure that we have the ability to push utilities through there um, and make sure that you guys are well out of the way beneath or whatever it takes um, to make sure that the running of future utilities will not, um, won't cause you any concerns or um, us to get what we would imagine is the full suite of utilities through there. Okay, all right, understood. And then the one last piece, uh, if, and I defer to both Todd and Amy on this, but um, because this is such a, uh, obviously significant and really uh, obviously important uh, utility project, and there's gonna be a significant amount of disruption in this area, there may be elements of our smart utilities plan, which is kind of our more comprehensive view of how we sort of manage utilities to basically future-proof them uh, for 
uh, as additional development comes on. If you can make sure you just connect with, with Todd or uh, Amy, if you prefer, with Amy, uh, just to sort of see if there's elements like fiber or other things that we should be thinking about incorporating as part of this, uh, just to be able to reduce things in the future that would impact you and impact other people in this corner. That'd be great. Chief, I'm so happy you, sorry, Chief, I, it's silly for me to say I'm happy that you brought that thing up because I was actually thinking, Amy, do you have enough interconnect on a No, no, so I, that was exactly, yes. I think that the, the, the form that this would take um, would be spare or empty fiber ducts uh, that if you guys are 12 feet down, we just want to run um, down A Street, uh, especially if there's going to be a repaving associated with it. Um, I believe that you guys have experienced exactly how fun it is to find a location um, to run stuff out there. Uh, so, yeah, it would basically be city shadow conduit ducts uh, that we would just want to be empty and at the surface. Um, we have a bunch of requests out here for DAS antennas and other types of things um, that will require fiber that are kind of... Uh, waiting out some development projects that are going to show up. So I think that um, having spare conduit would be the, the thing that we would ask for um, from a smart utility perspective. I hope these requests are not giving you guys headaches. Uh, I mean, I can just put myself into your situation saying, hey, I just wanted to put a steam line and now you're asking for the kitten caboodle. But We're only asking for a plastic tube, Para. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. And then for them not to melt it. <laughs> True, true. I mean, it, it is just that these these gentlemen have been, you know, the consummate gentle gentlemen, okay? And they've been always doing the right thing. And I, when people do the right thing, we just want to make sure that we are not taking advantage of each other. But the key here is uh, trying to do the right thing in the city's asset. When you get a grant of location, it's not like you are paying rent to us, okay? You, we, we don't make a penny out of it. But still, the city, the PIC commission, they have to manage that right of way in the interest of all parties. So, uh, so that, that, that has been my speech for the last two decades, where you get a free ride, sorry, because you know, we are not charging you rent. But so for that, not just that, like, give consideration to managing that roadway so it doesn't get dug up 200 times. Okay? Understood. That, that, that's it. We understand, uh, and this is an investment that we're making in this growing neighborhood. So we want to be a good partner with the city and support, uh, you know, a really productive uh, neighborhood here. So we, we thank you, thank we'll, you we'll so much. Out to you. Scott, I appreciate that. Other, other, uh, other questions or comments of the commission? Todd or Abby? No, it sounds like they've got some homework to do, uh, but we are all set other than that. Uh, any member of the public? I see none. Scott, kind of that I've heard of the, uh, the, the, two you, the two of you. Um, when would you like to come back to the PIC for the public hearing? Uh, that's a good question. Um, are you currently meeting on every two week schedule or four week? Uh, every two weeks right now. So. Um, Todd, you can provide the dates better than I can in real time, but uh, our next one will be... Uh, it may be, Chief, hopefully I'm not out of line here, uh, because the biggest concern I have is to make sure that all the private utilities that you have received those, hey, it's okay. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure how well they are communicating with you, because you may have to insist that they respond keeping in mind that if they don't, you know, they basically forego any third party litigation liability from here. Okay, mm -hmm. so your lawyers will get into this equation. I'm not sure whether you can pull it all off in two weeks, but I think you have heard what we are trying to say, and we are always here for you, but we just don't like wasting your time, not our time, wasting your time to have to come back and say, hi guys, we are not ready yet. So it, it is in your court to tell us when you are in a position to come back to us with all your ice dotted T's crossed and all of that good stuff. Yeah, I think we'll need at least four weeks. So I we could schedule something for four weeks. We'll see how we do in progress. And if we need more time, we can ask for it. <coughs> all right, so that would put us on February 25th. All right. Uh, thank you so much. With that, I'll, uh, uh, we will then see you on, uh, plan to see you on February 25th.
Thank you very Thank much. You. Appreciate the commission's time. Scott, kind of, thanks so much. Uh, and that was our final item. So with that, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So moved. Take care, all.